this is Julia Whittup with Talk Story TV, and this is the Authors School show. We have with us this morning Jennifer Vanderslice from Pennsylvania. She's the owner of Moon Glow PR, and she will be talking to us this morning about frugal publicity. So, good morning, Jennifer. Good morning, Julia. So, tell us, you wrote a book called The Frugal publicist. Tell us how, what prompted you to write that? Well, I was actually on a Twitter chat um, for small businesses and how to promote your small business. And there were a lot of small business owners. It wasn't authors, it's small business owners who said, you know, they had no idea how, how to get, you know, free publicity or uh, inexpensive uh, publicity for their business. And having been in the publicity business for eight years with my own company and representing authors, um, I decided, you know, I was going to write an article. Mm -hmm. Well, the article turned out to be too long and turned into a small book guide of about 28 pages on um, how, to, how to do your own publicity because it's really tough for self-published authors. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have, you know, a... a a PR firm would cost you, you know, a couple thousand dollars a month to uh, to do your publicity. And, you know, self-published authors and writers just don't have that kind of money. So I decided to let my secrets out and put it in a book. Okay, but you still do have your publicity for firm if somebody wanted you to do it for them? Uh, yes, I do still have um, Moonglow PR and I still run it. And... I did give out all my secrets in the book, but I decided it was my way of challenging me to be a better publicist and come up with new um, and inventive ways to promote my people because, you know, things get a little stale. You you feel like you're you're just running on ice. And so I wanted to be more creative myself. So that's why I put out the book. Well, and I think some authors would rather be uh, writing than doing the, their publicity because they could make more by having a really strong PR person to promote their book and be writing a second book. Right. And that's, that's another problem with uh, self-publishing is, you know, writers, that's what they do. They write. Um, they're not, you know, in the business of doing publicity. So it's, it's a foreign thing to them, but you have to do it. Uh, if you're going to, if you're going to write a book, um, you're going to self-publish it, and even several of my authors have uh, publishers. But because they're first-time authors or, you know, small potatoes to these um, publishing houses, you know, they're, not gonna, they're just not going to spend the money to uh, publicize the books and market their books. So they'll turn to me to um, help them promote mm -hmm. their books. Okay. Well, since you've already given out your tips could you give us a couple <laughs> sure um one of the things i i really highly recommend is don't completely rely on social media um it, it has its limits you're not going to reach everybody on facebook uh whether it's an ad or by posts or even if you boost your post you're just not going to get it out there the way it should be out there it's a nice tool I don't recommend um, buying Twitter ads. I don't recommend buying Facebook ads. It just doesn't pay from what I've found to uh, what they charge you every time someone clicks on your ad compared to what you're going to make off that, that sale. It, yeah, it's just it just doesn't add up. You spend more on the advertising than you do on the book. Um, get out there and network. Um, make sure you have your business cards uh, with your book name and your name and your, you know, an address where they can get in touch with you or where they can go to re see more about your book. Uh, one of my best pieces of advice is to have postcards made and I tell you where to go to have that done um, inexpensively. And, um, you know, put the postcards on community bulletin boards. Uh, you know, I have a post office uh, right up the road from me that has a community bulletin board and little shelf area where people put their flyers and their postcards. Uh, 
grocery stores like to have community bulletin boards. Uh, network, go to events, and make sure you always, always carry your postcards and your business cards with you. Okay. So that that helps you locally. What about some, how could you reach a national or even international market? Um, press releases is another way. Uh, learn to write a press release. Um, learn the difference between a press release and an article, too, because that's where I've found a lot of people don't seem to understand that a press release is to grab somebody's attention and grab an editor's attention or um, reporter's attention. It's not to spill all the beans and tell them all, your life story and everything. You just want to see, you just want to get them interested in saying, hey, I really want to know more about this. Um, a good way to do that is go look at other press releases mm -hmm. and uh, see how they're done. And um, I, you know, I, I will tell you that ninety. I've been told ninety percent of all press releases end up in the trash. <laughs> they will not get read. Um, so you better have a good headline. Yeah. Um, and make it interesting. Uh, grab their attention. What makes your you and your book different? from everybody else's, which comes into keywords. Make sure you have keywords in your press releases. Uh, maybe your book is set in a place um, that is interesting, uh, a time period that is interesting. These are all you know ways you can insert keywords. Uh, Revolutionary War, if your book is set in there. If it's a nonfiction book, you know, once again, I have an author who um, has written a cookbook um, that was inspired by the Beatles. Uh -huh. So not only does she can she attract with keywords and hashtags by using the word cookbook, recipes, Beatles, Fab Four, Liverpool, and things like that, um, she attracts two different separate groups to buy her book. She gets the Beatles fans would be interested in the book and she gets the cooks and people who like a cookbook so um, you know find your find your keywords find your hashtags and make sure you use them um, to uh, draw in more and more people and that should you know that should get you you know the attention you need great okay and do you have any suggestions on how to learn to write a press release? Um, in my book, uh, I give the link to my own um, my own press releases uh, that I put out on prlog.com, which is a free press release uh, distribution site um, anybody can use. And in there, it lists every press release I, I've written and posted. And um, you can go through there and you can read my own press releases. Um, you can read anybody's press releases on there. If you just go to PR Log, uh, they have different categories. So if you find a category that you think, you know, your book would fit into or the category of books, you know, go in there, click on it, and you'll read every press release that's been put out by anybody and uh, learn from those okay. how to write. And be aware that since anybody can use it, they're not necessarily all well written. <laughs> no, no. And it, press releases shouldn't be really too far over 300 words. Um, if, you fit, if you start hitting the 400 and 500 mark in words on a press release, you've written an article. You have not written a press release. And um, it's really a turnoff to reporters and editors when they see this, this really long press release in front of them because... It's not what they're looking for. They just want the facts. Right. And I could tell you from being a reporter that they won't read it. No. From no. They are not going to spend the time to read it and try to edit it down. Yeah. And one of the other little helpful hints I give, and a lot of people laugh at me about it, is um, send your press release to, you know, make sure you're sending it to the right editors of the newspaper or magazine, um, in other words, the books, books editor or arts editor or whatever, don't send it to the sports editor. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, just bad form. But instead of just sending it by email where the editor or writer is probably sitting there with 
their finger on the delete button before even opening the email. Um, one of the cute little helpful hints I give is try finding out the fax number to that newspaper and fax over your press release um, because everybody else is emailing in this day and age. And you could just sort of see a reporter sitting there hitting delete, delete, delete when the fax machine goes off and out pops this press release, which kind of, you know, makes them a little curious, you know, mm-hmm. what is this about that I would be getting a fax instead of an email? So, as I said, it's a cute, and I've gotten I've gotten quite a few uh, responses to faxes I've sent, where I've sent press releases out as a fax. Oh, okay. And then do they ask you to send it by digital so they can just copy and paste? No, because, you know, a lot of, nowadays it's, it's very common for a reporter to, um, you know, just use your press release as their article and put it out that way. But technically it was never what a press release was meant to do. It was meant to draw attention and get them to ask questions and write an article based on what you've given them. And um, so, you know, uh, what it does is it encourages them to get in touch with me and say, I'd like to discuss this with you or I'd like to interview your author. Yeah. Or, or can you send me a review copy of, of this book? Right. Okay. I just remember sometimes when I was in a hurry, I would pick one that was well written and just copy and paste it. Yes, yes, it's uh, that's you know that's very common these days, um, to do that. So you better make sure your press release is written very well because it may be may be published verbatim. <laughs> right. <laughs> and you better you better make sure you have that good picture with it. Uh, that's another hint is that um. Generally, pictures of someone, a person, instead of a book cover, are uh, more appealing than, um, you know, uh, just a still object. As I said, a, it's compared to a book cover or um, a picture of a stack of books or something like that. Uh, try to get yourself in the picture, uh, no matter how camera shy you are. Um, they just It's more of human interest, and the reporters like that better. I suppose if you are on the cover of your book, that might. Yes, that would work too. That yeah. That's a double whammy. You got it going both ways. You get your cover and your face out there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, let's see. That's a couple of good hints. And could you tell us where, uh, if anyone wants to buy your book, where they could go to buy it? Um, you can go to Amazon.com, mm-hmm. and you can do a search in the Kindle store on Jennifer Vanderslice. You'll see two books there. One was a, a book I short book I wrote about um, a trip I took, a four-day silent retreat I went on where you couldn't talk, so instead I wrote for four days. <laughs> and I knew people would ask me about it, so I published it. But also you'll see this book, The Frugal Publicist. Um, Today, April 30th, these, both these books are free at Amazon.com. So just do a search on, um, on Jennifer Vanderslice in the Kindle store, and you'll see my books. All right. Well, thank you for being with us today. Well, thank you for having me, Julia. I really appreciate it. Okay. So um, check out her book, and you can get it today free. So that's a good idea. Yes, it's, hey, it's the frugal way to do it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Julia.